So we're going to be making a glass material in this tutorial. Um, the first thing I've done is, in my materials folder, I've made a glass folder. And the reason I've done that is because I'm going to make a glass master in this tutorial. And that's going to give us control over things like the color, the amount of roughness, the refraction, the opacity, and so on. And then we're going to be able to make instances of that to make different various types of glass. So we'll right click and we'll make a new material. And we'll call this glass master. We'll double click that to load it. Let's drag it onto this monitor here. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is set up our material settings here. So surface is fine. We want to set this to translucent. And you can see in translucent we don't have control over um, any of our um, roughness, specular, metallic or normal. Um, so what we're going to do is just set this to surface transparency volume and that gives us access to all those additional nodes. So the first thing we'll do is hold down free and just left click just to create a base color. And I'll just pick a kind of really light desaturated blue for that. And then right click, convert it to a parameter and we'll call this base color. And I'm just going to drag that straight into my base color node here. Um, we'll also want to control the um, emissive a little bit here. So um, what we're going to do is hold M to add a multiply and then we'll hold S and tap to create a scalar parameter. We'll call this one glow strength. I'm going to drag that into there and that into there. So what we're doing and then that into emissive. So what we're doing here is this is the base color which defines just the base color here but it also goes into this multiply which is then multiplied by um, whatever number I have in here to create the emissive. So if I just stick say 100 in here what that's going to do is take that multiply it by 100 and give us a ridiculous kind of amount of glow. So the default value we're going to put in there is just zero for now. And just hit save. Then what we're going to do is just add three scalar parameters to control the metallic, specular and roughness. I think what it's expected to take this long to save, but so just call this metal, call this spec, and call this rough. I'm just going to clean these up a little bit. So what we can see here, the default value is in brackets. So you can see metallic is zero, specular is zero, roughness is zero. So we're just going to put our specular value, say, up to 50. And our roughness, we're just going to have it really low as a default value, say 0.05. Then we'll just hit save. So the next thing we want to do is to control the opacity. So in order to do that, we're going to use a Fresnel node. And when this finally saves, I will show you how to do that. So we'll have to right click, search for Fres, and then we want this Fresnel utility here. And then we're going to hold L and tap to create a lerp. And we'll drop that in here. So the way the Fresnel works is um, we've dropped it into this lerp, and we're going to use A and B as scalar parameters. So we'll drop one in here. And we'll call this opas res, and we'll do the same again. We'll call this opas edge res, and we'll drop these into here. And we'll just make just to make sure we've got them the right way round. We're going to set our edge to opacity one, so that'll be fully visible, and we'll leave our mid on zero and then we'll drop that into our opacity. So the way this works is the Fresnel defines um, the, whatever is happening on the edges of the curved surface. So as I'm looking at the direct center here, as this curves round, what's gonna happen here? So it, we could use it to say that it's gonna glow more here, <clears throat> that the color of it is going to change. And in this particular case, we're saying if you're looking at it directly um, flat onto the normal, then it's going to be completely invisible. And as it curves around, so the normal is basically 90 degrees this way, 
it's going to be fully visible. So in the middle here, I'm just going to change that default value to say 0.1. And we don't want this to be fully visible on this hard edge, on the edge here either. So I'm just going to change that to say 0.8 or kind of 0.9. Right, so with that set up, we also want to set up our refraction. Um, and we should be able to use this exact same Fresnel node here and basically the same system here. So I'm just going to copy those. Paste those with Control V and then drop that into our alpha. Now we'll need to rename these, of course. So I'm going to call this Fragment there, and this one refract edge like that, and we'll just drop that into our refraction. Right, so now we have control over our base color, our metallic specular roughness, the amount of um, emissive we have on this, um, the opacity strength and the refraction strength. So just to show you what refraction is doing, it's basically saying um, as light passes through this surface, how much is it refracted? So if we just take the middle here and just try ramping this value up. Hopefully that preview will update shortly. Now, normally the values are between 0 and 1, but I wanted to try and show you um, a bit more extreme. <laughs> That's obviously completely broken it. But um, we'll get a lot more um, of a preview of this in the actual viewport. So we're going to do that now. So in our parameters, we're just going to say, just leave them as that so that we can play around with them in the viewport. So we'll just hit save. Okay, so the final thing, which I totally forgot to do, is tick on two-sided on our material here. So obviously, as you've seen through, you want to see the back side of this surface. So we're always going to want to have two-sided ticked on. Uh, one thing we'll also mess around with is SSR, um, and I'll show you why later. So we'll just save that. Give that a few seconds to update. Um, so with the SSR, that means that by default it doesn't have them. So it's only going to reflect what's in our reflection probes. So it's probably worth just ticking that on now. Um, it might be quite expensive though, but so it's something to tick off if you are struggling with your frame rate and just rely on our baked kind of cube maps. So we'll right click on here and we'll do create material instance and then we'll drag something like a cube in this scene. We'll just ramp it up a little bit in size and we'll drop that onto here. Um, so we can see straight away we're getting the, some reflections in that surface there and the refraction isn't doing too much yet. So we'll double click on this and we'll go to our refraction here and we'll just try changing this variable. So if I just put say zero in there, for example, you can see we're starting to get some much more kind of refraction going on. Okay, so another thing to play around with, if we just see our reflection in here, hopefully you can see that on the video. If we just put our specular to zero, you'll see those re um, reflections vanished so I'm just going to keep that say up on 100. If we check on our roughness put that to zero you'll see the reflection becomes much more mirror like so no blur to it at all. So I'll just keep that quite low. If we just try changing our opacity here 
maybe we'll put this up to one, and then you know, obviously that's not gonna, gonna work. But the, um, the higher this is, obviously, the more kind of opaque that surface is. Um, obviously glass is a metal, but it can be worth just messing around with this setting just to see if it improves the overall look for you. And if we tick on the color, obviously that will allow us to control the color of that glass. Glow, I like to have just a little bit of glow on the glass. Just to show that it, it's basically um, implying that all the light is getting inside and bouncing around um, before it escapes that surface, similar to this kind of subsurface scattering. So just having that little piece of little bit of glow on there just helps to kind of um, show that effect and it's not very expensive to do so. Um, we'll also try dragging this onto say one of our spheres. Maybe we'll keep that one and we'll just clone him, drag that onto there. I'm just going to expand that out a bit more and we'll stick him kind of inside like so. Um, let's do a duplicate of this as well for this surface here and just change some of these settings. So I'll just put kind of different tint on the color there. Increase our roughness a touch. Maybe bring our opacity down here. And what we'll do is we'll quickly just play this and just have a look at those kind of materials in the viewport. So you can see we're getting some nice refraction work on our maps and stuff like that too. And we can see the object kind of inside from all angles as well. Um, so that's kind of a basic glass setup. Um, obviously we can gain a lot more control um, through this because at the moment all we're doing is using kind of basic nodes. What we could do on this is also add things like a normal map and basically just by using texture samples we can get kind of different kind of blur on our reflection create kind of frosted glass and things like that and that's what we'll cover in the next tutorial